All right, what I want to do is walk through a very basic setting up your first project and then how you can actually go in and add uh, an HMI into a project as well. So inside SysMax Studio, I am currently on the new project option and it gives me some project properties here. So I could call uh, this project name my first HMI project. And uh, we're gonna go with a standard project. Uh, I just picked an NX102 here, but obviously you would wanna pick whatever your controller is or for demo cases, you can just pick whatever you really wanna show as part of the demo. So uh, down at the bottom, we click on create and this is gonna start your first project. So there's a couple things we can do uh, to show some of these features. One thing I want to do for demonstration purposes is show EtherCAT. So I am going to double click on EtherCAT and it will bring up my EtherCAT menu tree. Uh, so over on the right side under the toolbox, I'm gonna click on servo drives and it's going to give me a list of servo drives. I'll go ahead and grab the uh, R88D-1 SN02H. It's basically a 200 watt, 200 volt, uh, 1S drive. And I'm just gonna grab and drag and drop that onto my EtherCAT tree. And now that node is on there. If you were doing that live and in person, the other thing you could do if you were connected to a controller is you could right click on the master. And uh, then you would have this option here, which is grayed out for me right now, but is compare and merge with actual network configuration. And then that'll actually pull in whatever's physically connected to your controller if you're online. Next thing I wanna do is add an axis in my motion controller. So I'm gonna say add motion control axis. And it's just gonna give me a default name, MC underscore axis triple zero. You can rename this to whatever you want. I'll just call it my servo. And if you double click on that, it will open up the settings. And what we need to do then is actually assign this motion control axis to the EtherCAT node, the servo that's uh, assigned to that EtherCAT node. So we need to change the axis type from virtual servo axis to servo axis. And then you'll see a red exclamation point down here under output device. And for that, you click on that drop down, and it's going to give you a list of uh, applicable EtherCAT nodes that are out there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the 1S that we had in. And then there's all sorts of settings. I'm not gonna go into those now, but those would be how you would actually set up your axis. Now what I wanna do is go into uh, your project and we're gonna just do some real basic examples here and then show how to pull that into an HMI. So one thing we wanna do is um, you can either click um, create a contact right on the rung. So you can either do that by uh, hitting a right click on the rung and then hitting insert input. Um, and I'll put a, a, a just a my input one. And one of the settings you can set up in SysMax Studio is it to ask you each time if you want it to be an internal or a global variable. If this is a variable that you want to have available to the HMI, you need to make sure that that shows as a global variable. So select global variable, and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna click, the other thing you can do is keyboard shortcuts, and the letter O is your command for an output. So I'm just gonna call this my output one. And then here we'll have a global variable as well. The other thing we can do, uh, if uh, one of the great things about SysMax Studio is that uh, we can do inline structured text. So if you are on the rung and you hit the S key, that will open up a new structured text window. And before I do that though, I'm going to come down to my global variables. So on the MultiView Explorer under programs, under data, I'm going to click on global variables and you can see there's actually global variables already in there that were created because we created two Booleans and then when you create a motion axis, it creates one there as well. Um, and so the other thing I wanna do is I just wanna put in a my analog one and we're gonna call that, uh, we'll call that a float, or sorry, not a float, a reel. Now with the reel, um, what that's gonna allow us to do is have some analog values. So 
I'm going to give a second one, uh, a second variable, and I'm just going to make this an internal one. Uh, so we'll call this my analog two, and we'll call this one a real as well. And what I'll do here is say that uh, my analog two equals my analog one. And then now we have a complete program. And if I click on F7, I can start building that. The other quick demo that we can do as well, if we wanted to just do some uh, real basics for demonstration purposes, is we can insert a rung below. And I can grab MC power just to show turning that function on and off. And here, uh, for a function block, we always have to give an instance name of the function block. So I'll just call it my servo power. And then for the axis, we reference my servo. And then we also have to say when we want it enabled. And uh, since we already created an input up here, I'm going to hit the letter C. That's going to give me a contact. And then I'll say my input one. And then um, that's going to just be a real simple program that we could see then. Now, this is just the PLC portion of this program. Now what I want to do is actually add in an HMI as well. So we can do that by uh, right-clicking up here at the top. So we go to the MultiView Explorer, and then there's a little image of a PLC. And if we right-click, we can say Add Device. And I don't want a controller. I want an HMI. So we'll go ahead and drop in one of the NA5s. And it'll take just a moment. So now that we have uh, the NA5 added into our uh, MultiView Explorer project now, you can see it shows the HMI image. So if I click on this new controller zero, that's going to go back to my PLC, and I'll get all the menu tree options for the PLC. But if I click on the HMI, it, the image will change to an HMI, and now the settings and everything are going to be specific to the NA. And what's cool feature about Sysmac Studio is we can actually have tabs here that are open both for the PLC and the HMI simultaneously, so it's nice and quick to go back and forth between them. Now, because the HMI is already in the same project as the PLC, when we click on device references and internal devices, it's already really kind of created that link between the PLC and the HMI. So that link has already really been set up. What we have to do then is go into variable mapping. And we can see now that this IP address is going to be that new underscore controller underscore zero, which is just the default name for our PLC. We can expand that. And then we can see this list of variables um, for our PLC project. So if we right click on the user variables, we can say create device variable, and it'll automatically create a device variable. So you'll notice that um, it basically puts the controller name underscore, and then the variable name. Now, the reason you have to use two separate variable names, one variable name for your HMI project, and then one variable name for your PLC project, is because there is a chance that you could actually use this HMI to control multiple PLCs. So you could actually have uh, two PLCs that both have the variable my analog one. So by putting a prefix on there, we can specify what PLC that goes to. Now let's go down to our left-hand side and we're gonna to go to the pages and we're gonna to go to page zero. And we're gonna get our first page. And now we can go over to the right and we can click on buttons. So let's go ahead and click on a momentary button. And we'll drop that on our HMI page. Now we wanna go up here towards the uh, the top menu bar and if we mouse up here, you'll see that it clicks on, or it shows properties. So if I click on that, it's now going to open up the properties table. And this is gonna show all of the properties for this HMI. So what we can put in is we can say what we want this text to be. So right now it says momentary button and we could call this my input one. And now that text will change to my input one. There's also text button down. So 
when you press that button and uh, the screen shows that that input is being pressed, we could say my input one pressed. And then that text would actually show on that particular button. Now, what we wanna do is tie this button to one of our inputs. So we're gonna start typing new underscore controller and you can see now uh, I have this uh, my input one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And now that has linked my input one to this particular push button on my screen. Let's go back to our toolbox. So if you click down here on the bottom of this right side of the screen, you can see this tab for toolbox. And now instead of buttons, let's click on a bit lamp and we'll just set this right next to it. And we'll go back here to properties again. And now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna set the variable. We're gonna go new underscore controller. And now we're gonna click on my output. And once you have the variable that you want, you can just hit tab and that'll auto fill the rest of it. And then the other thing we could do is um, we could put a, a data edit field, which is kind of basically like an input, an analog input. Um, so I'll just have uh, drag it over here and I'll go back to properties and there's all sorts of things you can set here. So we're gonna go ahead and set the variable to new underscore controller and we're gonna go to my analog one. Now with the data type, we can set that as numeric or Boolean or text. So if you were just looking for a string value, you could set that as a string or if you want that to be numeric for entering analog values, you can set it that way. And you can see there's scaling. You can set minimum, maximum values. So right now it's set from zero to 100. Um, for the value display format, so there's decimal if you want it to be decimal, hex or whatever. And then the display format, you can say how much resolution do you want to have on there? So right now I put two decimal points of resolution on there, okay? So we just have a real simple uh, screen that has an input, it's got a bit lamp showing the output, and then it has an analog input as well. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go back to my controller. So I'll select it, so we've got it selected here, and I'm gonna go back to this section zero program. Now what I wanna do is under simulation at the top, click on towards the bottom, run with NA simulator. I will select the simulator that I, or the uh, HMI that's in my project. There's only one here, so that's an easy one to grab. I'm gonna click okay. And then it's gonna start building a simulated project. So there's some software work that has to happen here. It's gonna actually build the project files, essentially compile them. And then there's a whole runtime version of the PLC then that runs in simulation mode on, the, on my PC. And then the same is true for the HMI. It's going to create a soft HMI that will run on my PC. And what's great about this then is then we can in real time watch what's happening between the HMI and the PLC to do either testing of our project or if we want to do a demonstration of it, it's a, it's a nice way of going about it. So it takes a little bit of time, but now you can see the NA finally opened up on my screen. So I'm just gonna drag this over here a little bit and I might pull this down in size just a little bit to be friendly. So we tied this my input button to this contact over in the program. So I'm gonna mouse over and I'm gonna hit that button. And now you can see the text changed to my input one pressed. And then if you look up on the ladder rung, when I press that button, that ladder rung goes active and then the output turns on here, this bit lamp turns on. The other thing we had is we had a data edit field. So this data edit field was tied to my analog one, which was this value here. So I will enter a value, I'm just gonna say 50.2, I'll click enter. And now back here, you can see that my analog one took the value 50.2. I could change this again to 
five. And it's going to have that value. So you can see there's, because of the way that the floating point math is done, you sometimes get these little extraneous uh, long decimals over there. But the key thing is that you, this gives you the ability to enter analog data. And then you can also have data displays as well where you could read the analog data. So in a matter of 15 minutes, we created a basic project. We added an HMI of both uh, digital inputs, digital outputs, analog inputs, and we were able to show how all that works. So SysMac is a great program for being able to do debug. It's a great program for being able to demonstrate how your project could work and being able to tie it in with the uh, simulation between both the PLC and the NA is a fantastic tool.